Good day, Leroux here from the website Make Lane of Uncle. Now, I would like to explain to you the setup of the panic button. So, the first thing is you will receive your panic button, you'll receive your lanyard, and you'll receive a small screwdriver, and then, of course, your charging cable, also accompanied with uh, uh, instruction manual. Okay. Your first step would be to charge the panic button's battery for eight hours before you do anything with the device. Okay. After that, you can go ahead and you can insert your SIM card. Apologies, let me just quickly take that closer to the camera there. What you will do next is on this side of the device, and uh, you should be able to see clearly there, you'll see there's a little SIM card slot there. Let's just move over there. But there's also a little hole next to it. Now that specific hole is your microphone. Please do not insert anything into that hole because you will damage the microphone and that is unfortunately not covered by the warranty. Okay, to wedge the little SIM card um, holder out or the little uh, cover there, you'll remove the two screws that is there. Um, I've already removed that for the purpose of the video because otherwise we would just be spending too much time on it. And the easiest way to wedge that out is actually with the screwdriver. Let me see if I can just quickly do that for you. Sometimes it takes a little while. Hopefully I don't waste too much time. Here we go. Excellent. Okay. And there's the little cover. Then your second step would be to insert your SIM card. Now look closely here. The contact part of the SIM card, you'll have your top of the device there. And the contact part with the little wedge cut off or the corner cut off there will go in first and the contact part should show upwards towards the buttons okay let's quickly use the screwdriver and once you insert it it will click in and it will stay okay the next step is remember to charge then you can switch your panic button on let's give it a couple of seconds you will actually hear it go on Okay, there we go. It's busy coming on. Once you hear that tune, you know you get uh, up and running. Okay. Remember to load data and airtime onto your SIM card. We will have a section on our SIM card page of how to activate your SIM card and load data and airtime onto it because these are the two requirements. For per month, around about five rands airtime and um, 250 megabytes worth of um, data is more than sufficient cost of that is 19 plus 5 in other words you're looking at 24 rand okay that should be more than sufficient for months use it is dependent the data will be perfect our maximum amount of data being used on this device a month is 180 megs but 250 megs just to play it safe and then the five rand air time uh, is round about if you're using our sim card is round about e equal to seven minutes talk time as our sim cards build, uh, build per second it's pure per second billing and um, that's uh, roughly 68 cents per minute um, that should be more than sufficient for you now the next step is you will have to scan the code on the back I'll open the app up now the app is called any tracking you need to download the app let me just quickly take the code out there and also the password so give me a second there you'll see there's a little code there at the top and there's a barcode there now how it will work is the barcode at the top is your um, device id so i'm going to put the scanner on on my telephone all right let's do that it should there we go and there you've got the device id and the default password to this device is one two three Oops, not E. Let's just do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and log in. All right, perfect, done. Okay, now that we're in the app, 
you will need to go to settings. Now, what is always important, especially if you have multiple devices, um, especially if you've got children, you'll most probably have multiple devices, but for that section, we will assist you because you can monitor multiple, uh, multiple devices uh, from one app. It is completely possible. Um, it's just always better to roll the phone uh, so that we can assist with the setup of that. Okay, your first step would be about the device. Okay, let's just give it a second there. Okay, the device model is there. Device phone number is always good to uh, put the phone number in, the person who it is connected to, and then uh, another contact number. The filter LBS and filter Wi-Fi, you should leave that alone. Don't select any of them. The change password, you can change the password to log in. It is possible to reset it, so please don't worry about that. And we've also got a, um, access to a back office with, um, with the server functionality of actually resetting your device's password. Now, this is quite important. Here you've got two options. You can go either route. Um, if you set a SOS number, when you press the SOS button, you can set up to three telephone numbers. Now, the three telephone numbers you can set, you can, once the SOS number is pressed, it will dial those three numbers until somebody picks up. Or you can just leave it open. And if I say you can just leave it open, then you can still press the SOS button, but it will just make, it will be a silent panic uh, on the panic button itself. And the person which has got the app or persons which has got the app installed on their phones will each get an alarm on the phone. Okay, let's just cancel that for now. We're not going to be setting that up. Now the phone book bot, this is quite important. You'll see my first number there is this. You can enter up to 10 telephone numbers there. Okay. The first two names is linked to number one and number two on the panic button. All right. So if you hold down number one, like I was doing on some of the uh, previous videos, uh, it will phone Desus, uh uh, telephone number if I press number two it will phone somebody else's number but the reason why there's 10 numbers on this uh, in the phone book that you can add is if there's no uh, if the let's uh, let's take an example if I've only got Des's number there then only Des will be able to phone to this uh, device the reason being it's a safety feature okay otherwise anybody can phone to it and um, that is something you want to actually avoid at all costs but let's carry on with the settings okay let me put that down for now we're done with the button there okay sms alert switch is for your main monitoring number to receive that the main monitoring number is let's say for instance i'm the main um person and uh, Let's create a scenario. Um, I've got two children, but I'll be monitoring uh, the devices uh, mainly. So I'll be setting my number as the main monitoring number. So once you turn on the SMS alert switch, um, I will receive a SMS for panics. I'll receive a SMS for low battery. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Okay, then let's cancel that quickly. The safe mode. Now, remember, um, I was telling you about the phone book side to it. Now, what is very important to keep in mind here, if I turn on the safe mode, only the numbers in the phone book will be able to call to the panic button. Please remember that. And it's very important to switch this on. Remember, SIM cards get recycled in South Africa. So in other words, I think this is a worldwide trend, uh, honestly. So there might be telemarketers that has got the, um, uh, your, your new number, whatever might be the situation. It is just unfortunately how it works. So switch that on, please. And let's cancel there. Scene mode. The scene mode is for when you receive calls you can either set it to vibration and sound in other words you'll have a ringtone uh, you sound only only a ringtone 
Um, vibration is obviously vibration of the device. Vibration only, it will only vibrate while you're receiving a call. And then you can set it also to silence, um, which I would rather not do. Okay, then now let's cancel that. Okay, the alarm clock or clock alarm, whichever, you can set um, alarms for yourself on the device. Ring your tracker. Ring your tracker is just a function to um, locate the tracker. If you've maybe misplaced it, it happens, unfortunately. Uh, you can misplace the tracker. Then you've got answer mode. This is quite an important setting. Press to answer. So once you receive a call, to end a call, you'll press the SOS button. Or to answer, you can press the number one button. As easy as that. Okay. Your next one will be the talking clock. You can switch it on or off. Um, in this, by default, is it is on. So if you press the SOS button once and release, um, you'll hear the time uh, um, in a verbal manner from the device. Okay. This is quite an important. Um, this is quite an important function. Now. The fall down alarm works as follows. If you switch it on, uh, you'll see you'll have fall down uh, alarm switch on or off, reminder by phone call. Now, how this uh, actually works is, let's just cancel that and I'll explain it nicely, is if a fall is triggered, you've literally got to restart the device so that it can trigger again. This, the fall alarm is definitely not for joggers because it will trigger. It's, it works according to their motion. And if the device is jumping up and down, it will definitely trigger a fall alarm. And then also what you've got to keep in mind is after a fall alarm, just restart the device and it will activate again. So this is more for the elderly. Um, then it works superb. Um, what is our next function there? The fall down level setting. A recommended level, as you'll see, you'll have zero, one, two, three. Okay, zero being the most sensitive and level six being the least sensitive. S setting it to about level three, perfect. Um, that will work very, very well in any scenario. Let's just quickly close there. The device language and time zone that I can just show you there, it's currently on English and there's a two. Now, for it to work perfectly, we need to set that to a plus two because our timeline is a GMT plus two in South Africa. And we'll press OK. I doubt it's going to save it now because there's no SIM. Oh, wait, there is a SIM card in the device, but I haven't switched it. I, I, I have switched it on. Um, yes, there we get the message success. It is on. Okay, then you've got remote reboot. Now, remember what I said regarding the um, the uh, fall alarm? Okay, the fall alarm, you can remotely reboot this device. You've got a remote power off there and then, of course, a factory reset. Okay, let's go to the first screen. You've got your tracking over there. You've got a historical route there. You've got geofencing. Um, and your health uh, switch there, you can set reminders, you can set, um, and please remember, this device is not intended to be a medical device, this is only an aid. It's like a cell phone with reminders. Keep that in mind, please. All right. And you've got your alert settings, you've got your remind settings, and there's also a frequently asked section. But once you've watched this video, you should be perfectly capable of setting this device. Now, one section we won't be covering in the how to set up is um, set up for businesses uh, with regards to the tracking module. And the reason being that I'm not covering this is this is something we prefer to do with you. Thank you very much for listening and apologies for the long video, but this is a very, very important video. Thank you kindly.